This is Pluto, an icy world located 7.5 billion kilometers from Earth. And recently, the best images we had were nothing more than a few pixels captured by the mighty Hubble Space Telescope. But now, thanks to NASA's New Horizons, we know it's an amazing world with mountains made of ice, glaciers of nitrogen, and even a tenuous atmosphere. Although the flyby happened three years ago, this isn't the end of the journey for New Horizons. It's got one more encounter in just a few months. Another meeting that will fill in even more gaps in our knowledge about the Kuiper Belt. An encounter with Ultima Thule, the most distant object humans have ever reached. I did a whole video on New Horizons, so I don't want to get too deep into it again, but here's the quick version. Planetary scientists have wanted to send a mission to Pluto for decades. As far back as 1989, Alan Stern and another dozen planetary scientists created a group called the Pluto Underground. Their goal was to figure out the kind of mission that could reach out to Pluto, a world that wasn't seen during the Voyager missions. After several missions were proposed over the decades, the New Horizons spacecraft was finally accepted and designed, and it was launched towards Pluto in 2006. It took New Horizons almost 10 years to reach Pluto, getting a gravitational assist from Jupiter along the way. On July 14, 2015, the spacecraft made its closest approach to Pluto, seeing the world and its moon Charon up close for the first time. The spacecraft was equipped with seven scientific instruments designed to photograph the surface of these worlds in several wavelengths, measure their atmospheres, features, temperatures, and chemical makeup. The pictures sent back to Earth from New Horizons were dramatic, a vast improvement over the blurry pixels provided by the Hubble Space Telescope. As always, a close encounter like this offered up more mysteries than it solved, which will keep planetary astronomers busy for decades. But New Horizons isn't done. It recently found a fascinating wall of hydrogen around the solar system, and in another few months, it's going to make its next flyby, Ultima Thule. Let's talk about what else has been discovered by New Horizons. What can we expect to see when it reaches Ultima Thule in New Year's Day 2019? And what plans are in the works for new missions that will go back to Pluto and Charon, not just to flyby, but to orbit, and maybe even land on the surface? It's time to go back to Pluto. Although New Horizons made its Pluto flyby over three years ago, it took the better part of 16 months to send all its data back. With a transmission speed of only 1 to 2 kilobits per second, it took that long to transmit all the data it captured in just a few days. Then New Horizons went to sleep again until July 2018 when it was woken up by NASA and prepared for its encounter with Ultima Thule, also known as 2014 MU69. Very little is known about Ultima Thule. It was discovered by the Hubble Space Telescope just two years ago and measures about 30 kilometers across. Just for comparison, that's about five times bigger than Comet 67P visited by ESA's Rosetta mission and about 60 times bigger than the asteroid Bennu, the target of NASA's OSIRIS-REx mission. Spacecraft operators just published new images of Ultima Thule captured by New Horizons. It's just a tiny speck in the spacecraft's camera. But this is an impressive accomplishment considering the fact that it's still 160 million kilometers away, greater than the distance from the Earth to the Sun. New Horizons will make its closest approach to Ultima Thule on January 1st, 2019, passing within just 3,500 kilometers of the Kuiper Belt object. This is three times closer than the spacecraft got to Pluto and Charon, and it should be capable of seeing features on the surface as small as 30 meters across. Is it a single object, a rubble pile, a contact binary like 67P? We just don't know anything else about the object yet, so I can't wait to see those first pictures. What happens after that is unknown, 
New Horizons still has some fuel in the tank, and if other Kuiper Belt objects are discovered along its flight path, it could be redirected again for another encounter. Another recent piece of news from New Horizons was the discovery of a vast wall of hydrogen surrounding the solar system. The discovery was made with the ALICE instrument on board New Horizons, which picked up a faint ultraviolet glow beyond the solar system's heliopause. This is the bubble that surrounds the sun, pushed out by the solar wind, which collides with the background winds from the rest of the stars in the Milky Way. On the far side of the heliopause, New Horizons detected the faint signal of neutral hydrogen atoms piling up outside this bubble, a vast wall of hydrogen first seen by the Voyager spacecraft. New Horizons will continue to observe this region every few months to help astronomers piece together the environment at the farthest reaches of the solar system. We've seen our first tantalizing images of Pluto, but of course, planetary scientists want to learn more. They want to go back with a new mission that could even land on the surface of Pluto. And we'll talk about these plans in a moment, but first I'd like to thank Michael Stephen, Bradley, Joseph Hart, Douglas Smith, Laura Sanborn, Ed Williams, Bernard Rabnold, Jacob Miller, and the rest of our 843 patrons for their generous support. If you love what we're doing and you want to get in on the action, head over to patreon.com slash universe today. As incredible as the New Horizons Pluto encounter was, the reality was that the spacecraft was only able to image about 40% of Pluto and Charon during its flyby, at resolutions of 10 kilometers per pixel or less. Furthermore, the spacecraft wasn't able to image any of Pluto's other tiny moons in high resolution. It's amazing to think that the dramatic features we see on Pluto and Charon are less than half the story. Of course, the close-up flyby generated more questions than it answered for Pluto researchers. Why does the world have such active glaciers? Does it have any kind of cryovolcanism? What kind of geologic process could have generated such enormous mountain ranges? Is there a liquid ocean underneath the ice? Do the other sides of Pluto and Charon look anything like the sides we've already seen? In order to get some answers, researchers would like to send an orbiter or even a lander back to Pluto. As I mentioned in a previous video about upcoming space telescopes, researchers across space science are setting their science goals as part of the 2023 Decadal Survey. In a recent paper entitled A White Paper on Pluto, Follow-on Missions, background rationale and new missions recommendations, a team of planetary scientists put forward why a return mission to Pluto should be a priority for NASA and what different kinds of missions should be possible. In terms of missions, they propose three options, another flyby, an orbiter, and a lander. The flyby would be a low cost mission that would be timed so that it sees as much of the terrain as possible that New Horizons missed could have a new suite of instruments designed to study the Pluto environment and gather additional data. Once the flyby of Pluto was complete, it could go on to study other Kuiper Belt objects. That sounds pretty familiar. An even more exciting idea would be to send an orbiter. This would be a larger flagship mission that would take a slower trajectory to Pluto, but be able to go into orbit to stay. Over the course of several years, the spacecraft would be able to intensively study all the worlds in the Pluto system. It will be able to help answer questions uncovered by ongoing research. And the most exciting option would be to attach a lander similar to how the European Huygens probe was attached to NASA's Cassini at Saturn. This lander would detach from the orbiter, land on the surface of Pluto, and study it from close up. A mission to Pluto would be very similar to NASA's Dawn mission using an electric ion engine to generate the kinds of enormous velocities to get out to Pluto relatively quickly. But unlike Dawn, which is closer to the Sun at the asteroid belt, a Pluto orbiter would use a decaying chunk of plutonium as a battery to run its thruster and science instruments. According to Alan Stern, the principal investigator of New Horizons, an orbiter mission on a powerful rocket would probably need 7 to 11 years to cross the distance from Earth to Pluto, depending on the launch vehicle. Ideally launching sometime between 2026 and 2028, and then it could spend years and years studying the Pluto system. Once there, a mission would be able to image the rest of Pluto and Charon at very high resolution, and even take time to take pictures 
of the rest of its moons. It would be equipped with instruments designed to investigate the features discovered at Pluto, like ground-penetrating radar, mass spectrometers, thermal mappers, and altimeters. By staying at Pluto for a long time, a mission could watch how the icy world changes as it drifts farther and farther from the Sun in its orbit. New Horizons observed the atmospheric haze around Pluto, but a return mission would be able to measure the chemicals in the atmosphere, determine how big the particles are, is there weather? And the science of Charon would be as interesting as Pluto itself. There are signs of ancient plate tectonics on the surface of Charon. When did that shut down? What caused these red stains on the surface of the world? A longer term mission could study the rest of Pluto's moons since there'll be many opportunities for close flybys. We only got a quick introduction to Pluto and Charon, and as you could see, there are so many additional questions that only a long-term mission could help answer. Of course, you could say that about almost every corner of the solar system. It's a huge place, and we've only explored a fraction of it. But it's really exciting to think that we're only a few months away from New Horizons' close encounter with Ultima Thule, the chance to see another world in the Kuiper Belt. And it's even more exciting to know that there are plans in the works to return to Pluto. I know I want to see more. All right, what do you think? Would you advocate for a mission to Pluto? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Once a week, I gather up all my space news into a single email newsletter and I send it out. It's got pictures, brief highlights about the story, and links so you can find out more. Go to universetoday.com newsletter to sign up. And did you know that all of my videos are also available as a handy audio and video podcast so you can have our latest episodes show right up on your device? go to universetoday.com slash audio or universetoday.com slash video to get the one you want. And I'll put the links into the show notes. And finally, here's a playlist.